In this video, I'll be giving you the best guide to defeating the Red Worm or Grey Lurm boss fight solo or with your friends inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. This guide will include all of the possible USB and boss fight locations, the best loadout to run when going up against the Red Worm, and tips and tricks to make this go as smoothly as possible. Before we get into it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you're new, as getting all of the gameplay for this video took quite a long time to produce. Also in the comments below, let me know where you think this boss fight ranks in terms of difficulty out of all of the previous boss fights in Call of Duty Zombies history. With that all out of the way, let's get into the guide. First things first, we're going to be going over the best loadout that you want to run in order to defeat the boss as efficiently as possible, starting with the weapon I'd suggest running and the build for it. With the recent patch as of December 14th, the SVA Assault Rifle is no longer the meta inside of MW3 Zombies. By far the best gun in the game overall is the Lockwood 680 shotgun. This has always been one of the better guns in the game since launch, but with the release of Season 1 it got even better with a little bit of a buff that went unnoticed until very recently. This Lockwood absolutely wrecks zombies, special enemies, and ether worms if you get this thing to triple pack a punch with a legendary variant. The attachments I would specifically run to make the Lockwood hit its full potential are the Crownbreaker Choke Muzzle to increase the hipfire and tax stand spread as well as giving you tighter pellet spread, the Lockwood Barrel Defender which significantly increases your ammo capacity, recoil control, aiming stability, and bullet velocity, 12 gauge slugs which increase the damage range and bullet velocity, the Express Lightning Bolt to decrease the time it takes in between shots, and lastly the sawed off mod which gives you massive boost to your sprint to fire time, movement speed, aim walking movement speed, as well as your aim down sights time. Once you have the Lockwood build set, we can move on to the remainder of your loadout. I would highly suggest running a setup game before you attempt to fight the worm so that you can get yourself a large rucksack, a three plate vest, a sentry turret, a durable gas mask, and a self res so you don't have to waste your time or money going for them during your main run. I would also highly recommend bringing in the golden armor plates and ether blade which can be found in the dark ether. The ether blade will always one hit zombies which is super useful during the boss fight and the golden armor plates will allow you to regenerate armor plates every three to four seconds. The golden armor plates are really a necessity if you want to beat the boss solo because without them you'll be a damage sponge and not have enough time to focus on killing the worm itself. If you haven't gotten to the dark ether and you want an in-depth guide on how to do so check out the season one super guide I have a link in the description below. With the remainder of your acquisition stash I would equip at minimum a refined ethereum crystal, legendary ether tool, juggernaut, stamina up, and quick revive. These will allow you to run into either tier two or tier three right away to begin smashing out contracts for SM to purchase the remainder of your perka colas pack a punch upgrade and self revives from the buy station which we'll touch on later rounding out the rest of your loadout i would equip the experimental gas grenade as your tactical slot because it slowly damages the worm when thrown at it and can be replenished by hitting the ammo boxes near the boss fight area and lastly i would run the energy mine upgrade because it has a pretty fast recharge on it and will be used to kill zombies and elite bosses that spawn during the worm now that the loadout's out of the way let's get into how to find the usbs to get the boss to spawn as well as in-game purchases you need to make to in preparation for the boss fight so once you're loaded into a game you're going to immediately want to find where the worm boss fight is at inside of your game. There are four spots that the boss fight area will spawn, and each is around the area where the storm will start. You can easily tell where it is by finding two ammo crates that are beside each other in those specific areas of the map. If the storm isn't right next to the boss fight location, I would suggest exfilling and getting in another game where the storm also bumps up against the boss fight area because you'll need all the time that you can get to fight the worm, especially if you're doing this in solo. But if you do feel comfortable enough with where the storm is in relation to the boss fight area, you can now make your way to one of three different buildings around the map that will have the locations for the four USB towers you'll need to collect to get the worm to spawn. On screen now is every location that the pictures, boss fight area, and USBs can spawn in. Massive shout out to MWZ Hub for creating this interactive map that you're seeing now. If you want to zoom in on any of this, check out the link to the interactive map that's in the description below. Once you're at the building with the pictures in them, take note of where the USB locations are in your game and start traversing the map to get them collected as quickly as possible. You need all four different USBs in order to get the worm to spawn, so make sure you don't miss any. Once all four USBs are collected, I would highly suggest doing contracts in Tier 2 and Tier 3 as soon as possible so you can start to get your weapon to triple pack a punch if it isn't already, all of your perks bought, and stocked up on as many self-revives as possible. I'd like to think I'm pretty decent at the game, but when I beat this solo, I went through about four self-revives, so the more you have, the better. I would also purchase a century turret or two to take care of some of the zombies that'll spawn but honestly they won't do very much for you. Once you're all stocked up and ready to go, make your way to the boss fight area and locate the four ether refractors. Wait until the 45 minute timer hits zero and the storm will begin to move in. As the storm crosses over the refractors, you'll be able to input the USBs into each of them. After all four USBs are placed, it'll take about 30 seconds for the worm to pop up out of the ground. During this time, I would suggest running to the nearest buy station if one is close enough and purchase more self revives with the four slots that become free after you place the USBs down. 
Once the Grey Lord makes his grand entrance, you have the remainder of the game to take him out. While you're fighting him, tier 3 zombies and bosses will spawn, so make sure to remember to pop your energy mine every time it becomes available because these will take out anything that's around you in one or two hits. Additionally, the worm will periodically spit out four purple orbs that will track you and tick you for damage while also giving health back to the worm each time they connect with you, so make sure you're focusing on these as soon as you see them. When you have the opportunity, fire away and throw your gas grenades at the worm's red spots to damage him and remove his shield health and overall health. There's no secret to defeating this guy besides being patient, so make sure you're shooting him at every possible opportunity you have to slowly chip away at his health. When your gas mask gets low, run over to the ammo boxes that are near the boss fight because they'll actually replenish your gas masks. If your mask breaks, you're very unlikely to complete this boss fight because you'll be constantly going down to the gas. Now, on top of all of this, the worm will shoot laser attacks at you that will instantly down you, so make sure that you're constantly on the move. After a bit of time, the worm will burrow himself underground and move around a bit. It's important to keep track of where he is because he'll pop up and throw you into the air and either knock you into your parachute animation which will turn your screen sideways or swallow you entirely. If he does swallow you, continue to shoot him while you're inside of him to take off some extra health but as soon as he spits you out, spam the parachute so you don't get slammed into the ground taking it down. As I mentioned earlier, it's very likely that you're going to take multiple downs during the course of this boss fight, so try not to get discouraged. In my opinion, this is easily the hardest boss fight we've ever gotten. There's so much micromanaging that you have to do in order to take him down, on top of being skilled enough to fend off the orbs and the zombies. But if you're up for the challenge, the rewards are well worth the trouble this will cause you. Each time you defeat the worm, he'll drop you a Wonder Weapon Acquisition Case, an Ether Tool Upgrade, and some extra goodies. You'll also be treated to a reward portal containing either the Flawless Ethereum Crystal, Legendary Ether Tool, or Scorcher Wonder Weapon schematics. This is easily the best loot in the game and also one of the best ways to get the VR11 to spawn if you haven't already used it. The only thing that sucks about this boss fight is that you can get repeated schematics which means if you get the legendary ether tool on your first try and you complete it again, there's no guarantee that you'll get the pack-a-punch crystal or the scorcher. But overall guys, this is the most exhilarating boss fight that we've ever had and it really gives me hope that in future zombie games we might see endgame easter egg boss fights that are on par or harder with the Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, or Legion boss fights from previous Call of Duty zombie titles. Treyarch absolutely nailed it with the difficulty on this one. You have to be stocked up with the best loot in the game, and even then, especially in solo, there's no guarantee that you make it out alive every single time. There's no easy strats to clear this guy in 60 seconds, just pure devastation from Grey Lerm. So seriously, Treyarch, if you're listening to this, fantastic job for knocking it out of the park with this one. If you enjoyed this guide and helped you defeat the Red Worm boss fight, let me know in the comments below, and consider leaving a like as well as subscribing if you're new. Have a good one and stay safe.